Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about being a junior and trying to get productive when you're feeling overwhelmed. So let's get into it. So the question in question here was a little bit of a story and it basically went, Frederick, I am a junior developer and I feel very overwhelmed with all the things that I have to learn at my first job. Do you have any tips on how to, how to create a workflow that makes you more productive? And the short answer is start every single story by listing out a list of to-dos. Start every single story by really, really, really reading through the specification and, and write down any questions, anything you can think of. And third and lastly, ask questions of your senior co-workers. Let me explain. So when it comes to software development, it's sometimes very tricky for you to keep all the things in your head. I know that I have this problem and I've had this problem for pretty much forever. And it's a reoccurring thing because when, you ha when you're working with different stakeholders like a PO or a product manager or something like that, like when you have people define stories for you, you have to remember something. These people are at a varying range of skill when it comes to setting technical expectations or technical specifications. And I have had, I have worked with people who are literally stating to me, implement the feature. That's like the whole description of the story. It's a one sentence story. Oh, build support for this feature. Here are the artboards, which is like tons and tons of artboards. And I kind of sit there and I go, okay, that's a little bit uh, open for the interpretation. Hopefully it's okay that I'm filling all the blanks. Of course it's not. It's just that I'm, I know that if I now just start working and I start, bu start building all of these things without stopping first and actually thinking this through, the thing that the person who made the story should have done, but I'm sorry that it's an unfair world and we developers, we're usually put in a situation where we have to think more and we actually have to do quite a lot of more work when it comes to preparing stories than the people who are actually paid to do this job. I'm very sorry to say, but sometimes you have to remember like non-technical people it's not possible for them to foresee everything. So it's a bit of a back and forth. You have to help out. And the easiest way for you to help out is to start every story by asking every single question and like listing out all the to do's. And I, you, I do, usually do this, uh, as the, that's the first thing I always do. Now, the reason why this is going to help you in terms of productivity is because I promise you that by the time, you, if you're working on a really big story, that by the time that you are done, there will be at least 20, 30 things on that list. If you're doing it, like if you're checking off like all the questions you have, all the things you need to do, all the testing that needs to be done, etc., etc. And odds are that you will forget something, especially when you're a junior and you're being like overwhelmed, you might forget that, oh, this was supposed to be in the specification or that was supposed to be working or etc., etc. And by just writing down the different t t tasks that are on your in your lap at this point, all the things that you actually have to do, you actually become a little bit of a, well, you become a, a you, you get a clear specification, you get a bigger, a clear picture of what it is that you need to figure out. And this is very useful, one part because it serves as a reminder when you're working so that you can go back and reference, oh yeah, I've done this now and now I should be doing this, etc., etc. It's not a step guide, it's just, all these things on this uh, this list, I should have an answer to, or I should be able to say that, oh, I've already done that. Once, the, once you have that, you will actually start to see when you're listing out all of the things that some things you know how to do and some things you don't know how to do. And that's also very useful because that brings questions. And these questions are very useful, such as, oh, okay, I need to tweak the security policy on this system. Uh, I've never done that. Okay, so I need to, uh, okay, how do you, tweak the security settings on the system. That's the first question. And then the second part of this comes in where you need to be okay with asking questions of, uh, of your different coworkers. So now you might need an introduction to this part of the code. And that's a perfectly natural thing to ask for, at least in most situations, where you as a junior, you kind of go, well, I've never really worked with security protocols or anything like that. 
it would be great if I could get an inter introduction to how we do things here and like just, okay, this is how it works and so forth to kind of get a sensation of where, where are you going to look and like kind of what's entailed in the thing that you're going to do, right? Um, from there, it's usually pretty, like that's pretty much as productive you can, I, 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 that's, that's a very productive workflow. It's going to help you a lot. The last thing I could mention is that it usually helps by if you are trying to explore a feature or if you're trying to figure out how a certain piece of software fits together. It's usually most efficient to either get an introduction to how the feature works or when you're actually studying yourself and kind of reading up on things to start at the network layer, start at the top of the program. You, look, you can look at every network endpoint, every path in your server as the entry point to your feature or to the system. And so well, you go up to the server and you see, okay, if I click the interface, if we're talking about a web application here of some sort, uh, request goes into that route there, okay, then I go to the server and I say, okay, so I sent in that data or I requested that endpoint. Okay, here's the top of that endpoint with the path and then I can just follow along and see, okay, so we have these services or these methods that do this and so forth and so forth. Because that's what an endpoint usually is structured like. It's just a, it's a tree of events that take place. And it usually helps a lot if you just start at the top and you work your way backwards. So what I want you to take away from this is that in order, at least what I believe, to improve your workflow as a junior developer, especially when you're feeling this overwhelmed. And I mean, I still do this. I do this every single day. I'm gonna do this in just a few hours when, I, when I'm at work. Start by listing out all the questions and all the steps that you believe that you need to take in order to deliver on a story. Because if a story is unclear or it's unspecified or you have questions or things like that, it's so much better to know about those things up, up front, if at all possible. I mean, you, of course, you update the list as you go along if you get new insights and you need to ask these questions. Because otherwise, you might end up in a situation where you build the wrong thing or you forget things and all of a sudden there's a bug and people are angry with you or, well, doesn't have to be that they're angry with you, but you you mess up somehow. And just having a checklist like check off, okay, I did that, I did that, I need to have an answer to this question, which is the second thing. Write down your questions as well and get answers to those questions. Try to find someone who can give you an introduction to a feature that you're unfamiliar with or things of this nature. And lastly, if you're trying to figure out how a feature works, start by going to the top of the network call, like at the path, and then work your way backwards through this tree of events that can take place. It usually helps if you go that route rather than just diving into the middle of the code and trying to figure out your things out that way. And these things, they all flow into the same thing. Your comprehension of the code, your domain knowledge, is the thing that is going to give you the most amount of productivity because the more stable you are in how the system works and the tools that you use, the faster you're going to be able to work. And that's the biggest challenge for you when you start out. Have a great day.